Let us now have our abdominal physical examination of a 25-year-old G3P2-2002 on her 32 weeks of gestational age. It is necessary to perform hand hygiene before and after every patient contact to prevent the spread of nosocomial infection. First, I need to introduce myself to the patient before proceeding with anything. My name is Dr. Raymond Floresca. May I ask your name, please? Explain the procedure to the patient and address any apprehension. Also, position the patient to supine with a little tilt to the left side in order to prevent the compression of the inferior vena cava. To commence the exam, I will first expose the patient's abdomen, having obtained her permission to do so. In addressing the patient's concerns, also explain the procedure to the patient. Today, I will perform an abdominal physical examination for you. At times, this may involve pressing quite deeply on your abdomen. I will make sure that the assessment is as pain-free as possible. If, however, it is very uncomfortable at any point, just tell me so. The first step of the abdominal exam is inspection. I will be looking for linea nigra, stria gravidarum, cesarean, or other surgical scars. Overall, on inspection, the patient's abdomen will present globular in shape, notably distended with the size and the fully mature age of gestation of the fetus. It could also appear with purplish striae gravidarum or stretch marks. Linea nigra shall also be present with muscle tone slowly diminished, projecting the so-called diastasis recti or the separation of the rectus muscles at the middle of the abdomen. On auscultation, there is a need to warm the stethoscope to prevent startling the patient. The fetal heart rate or tone could be well heard on the left lower quadrant for our case, where there is noted firm and non-nodular region or side of the paraumbilical region of the matter after proper palpation of the fetal back when doing the lipos maneuver too. Now, on palpation, there is a need to determine the fundal height. In performing this maneuver, I will palpate the inner aspect of my index finger gently pressing downwards and inwards, filling the very first point of resistance. This will coincide with the uterus fundus. So as to reduce bias, I will use my measuring tape on the blind side. I will place the tip of the tape at the fundus, measuring from the variable to the fixed point, which is the symphysis pubis. I will then check the measurement and it should correlate within two centimeters to the period of the gestation of the patient. And in our case, it's 33 centimeters. Now let's perform the Lippold's maneuver. The first maneuver is called the fundal grip. Here, we need to note of the presentation, whether it's rich or cephalic. The second maneuver is called the umbilical grip. Here, we need to assess the fetal back in order to note of the fetal heart tone. In our case, the fetal heart tone was heard on the left lower quadrant. The third maneuver is called the pollux grip. It is used to determine the fetal presentation, station, and engagement. Finally, the pelvic grip. Now turning and facing the mother's feet, we palpate the bilateral lower quadrants to determine the engagement of the fetal presenting part. In summary in, in the documentation, the funnel height is 33 centimeters, which coincided with the age of the station. It is a single fetus in a longitudinal lie, cephalic presentation, three-fifth palpable with fetal heartbeat heard and regular on the left lower quadrant. At the end of the exam, drape and thank the patient for allowing to perform the exam. And of course, hand hygiene must be done.